the amount of games that are good, I can count on just two fingers, honestly. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I'm your humble narrator, and welcome back to another Bundle Banter. My goodness, fanatical, we've missed you so much. This is not the greatest bundle I've ever seen, but hey, we're back, we're, we're doing the thing, and it's a relatively tiny one, so <laughs> I gotta appreciate that. This is the fanatical Refuge Bundle. <laughs> you get eight games for four dollars, and I mean for fifty cents each, the games aren't terrible, but there's definitely some winners and some losers, so let's jump in and check out what the offerings are. Game number one, The Spectrum Retreat. Game number two, Chess Ultra. Game number three, Extreme Exorcism. Game number four, Iron Cast. Game number five, Fly Hunter Origins. Game number six, Stick It To The Man. Game number seven, Knit Underground. And game number eight, Really Big Sky. There's definitely some stuff that I've seen before, there's some stuff that's already floating around in my Steam library, which probably means that it's been bundled before, but there's also some stuff that, uh, is, is relatively new to me. Will I love it? Will I hate it? I guess we'll find out with the first game up. The Spectrum Retreat. Okay, so which games spring to mind when I say, first person, narrative driven, puzzler? Portal? Probably. <laughs> Well, if you're comparing this game to Portal, you are going to end up sorely disappointed. The sound work is average. The puzzles are a one-trick pony that didn't really present much of a challenge even for a dumb boy like me. The graphics seem striking until you realize that they're just going for a tech spin-off of the safest and most uninteresting design style that exists on the planet. Art Deco. If you can recall my city Skylines review, you might know how unimpressed I am by Art Deco. I think I called it pretentious in so many words, and I mean it. The one truly redeeming quality in this game, that is the graphical style, can be found done more interestingly in plenty of other titles. The Spectrum Retreat doesn't take a single risk, and to me it comes across as an uninteresting slog. Had they decided to mix things up a little bit, and tr at least try to give the game a personality of its own, Things might have been a little bit different, but as it stands, I'm I'm truly not impressed by this. It's a well-built game. It's solid. For 50 cents, okay, I might give it a pass, but overall, there's better first-person puzzlers that you could be spending your time with, honestly. Chess Ultra. Hey! Remember when Chess Ultra was in uh, Humble Monthly? I think it was like May. I hope you didn't pick it up then, because here it is again. It's still a little bit lackluster even when compared to the default chess game installed on every single computer in existence. But I will give it this, it definitely looks pretty. Pair the nice graphics with the soothing music, and you'll almost feel like swirling a scotch whiskey and smoking a Cuban cigar while losing a round of chess to some anonymous child somewhere in China. Of course, the animations are so slow that even if you're getting your ass handed to you with the quickness, you'll still be drunk long before the midpoint of the match. It's a decent chess experience, but there's still free chess software that does certain things that this software doesn't. All I want to do is begin a game from a specific positioning, but it's not possible. You play this game from the starting position, or you don't play at all. I mean, it's a decent experience. Chess is inherently awesome, it's really hard to screw this up, but as I said in that humble monthly for May, there's a lot that can be added, and this game definitely still needs some work. Extreme Exorcism, a pixel art platformer that lets you kill yourself, which is exactly what I need just about now. <laughs> no, but seriously, this game has a nice soundtrack, a passable art style, and a unique mechanic in that each you from previous rounds that you've played comes back as a ghost and copies your moves. You'll need to think carefully about where you've been and where you were shooting. It's not easy to fight against yourself, especially if you're spamming the fire button. I made that mistake on the first go around and it was brutal. Luckily, there are a plethora of different weapons that make it easy to see yourself back to the grave. You can equip three at a time and they all fire with the same button, which is super nice. There's also local co-op to add that extra bit of chaos into the mix Overall, it's a well-designed game that takes the ghost replays of Super Meat Boy to the next level. It doesn't do much to innovate outside of the ghost copy mechanic, but 
that's good enough to get at least a few hours of mileage out of this title, especially if you've got somebody else to play with. Ironcast. I fucking hate gem matching games. The only thing I hate more than gem matching games is a gem matching game that actually manages to make me want to play a gem matching game. Damn you, Ironcast, and your wily Victorian era steampunk roguelite charms. The game describes itself as Puzzle Quest meets FTL, and that's basically bang on. During, er, battles, you'll match gems whose colors represent shields, engines, weapon, coolant, and repair. Do you want to hang out in battle matching endurance gems to soak up the EXP? What if you can't get enough repair matches to undo that damage? Well, then you're going to have to pony up and pay some repair costs. You can aim for parts on your enemy as well, which is super cool. Knock out their weapons to neuter them, burn through their shields, but oh no, now you only have enough coolant left to make another shot or raise your shields as their weapons come back online next round. It's more than I ever thought that it could be going into it. The game is an amazing experience that makes me like a genre that I should hate by combining it with a genre that I absolutely love. Which is interesting. Bad plus good equals still good? I gotta be at least a little impressed. If you ask me, this should be the Ironcast bundle. This is the number one for me. And we go from number one to number eight, the very bottom of the barrel, we have Fly Hunter Origins. This is, uh... uh oh my god. I'm sorry. This is a. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. This is a mobile. A mobile platformer that ended up on Steam. Oh, God, why? This feels like a developer's first attempt at a platformer. Which is generally the first game that developers make because it's one of the easiest genres of game to make. It isn't the worst thing that I've ever played, and it at least does the player the mercy of at least being extremely short at just a couple of hours in length, but it is so insanely safe and forgettable. Fly Hunter does try to extend the replayability with little rewards like upgrades that are super easy to get and various suits that I don't give a shit about. Nothing that they do really makes me want to jump back in for another two hours of this. The controls are everything in a platformer, and this game feels slightly sluggish with the input, and on top of that there's some extremely wonky hitbox issues. Maybe you can get away with that on a phone with touchscreen controls and a tiny little screen, but now you're running with the big boys, okay? Ah, uh, yeah. I expect instant response and picture-perfect hitboxes in a PC platformer. This game isn't a complete travesty, but <laughs> you better believe it's well on its way there. Stick it to the man! Imagine waking up with a gigantic pink arm sticking out of your brain. What would you do with it? After jerking off, of course. This is a point-and-click-ish platformer light <laughs> that I found to be pretty bearable, mostly because of the focus on far-out humor. The humor and the art style brings on some Psychonauts vibes, but this game is nowhere near as well-constructed as Psychonauts, so let's not go down that road. We're gonna try to enjoy Stick It to the Man for what it is. It's very light on the actual game part of this video game. There isn't a ton to do, little bit of platforming, stick some stickers on stuff, but mostly you'll just partake to watch the story unfold. There isn't much replay value here, and that, combined with the short duration of the game, might turn some people off of it, but for the price of 50 cents? I don't know. I think it's worth the ticket to ride. You'll get a lot more bang for your buck out of spending 50 cents on this than if it was spent at an arcade or at the movies. Don't expect a life-altering experience, but do give it a shot. It's not amazing, but it is enjoyable. It's not mind-blowing, but it's definitely decent. Knit Underground. This is the third game in the Knit series, which a lot of people might not realize because the previous two titles never made it to Steam. Knit Stories is a fantastic experience that is completely free to experience for yourself, and you should go check it out. But playing that entry will likely confuse the shit out of you from the instant that you open Knit Underground. 
Stories encouraged whimsical exploration. Underground is a soulless trek through endless corridors. The enemies are generic, the art style is extremely laughable. In previous entries, Knit was low res, so it felt instantly cohesive and fairly passable. Trying to step up the art style was <laughs> a massive mistake. These graphics look like something that programmers would use as a placeholder. It's horrible, and I hate it. Despite the low price, I can't honestly recommend this entry, simply because the superior version is Knit Stories, and that is available to play for free right now. And you will likely like it a lot more than this abortion of a game. I'm all for pixel-perfect platformers, but generally they need to have at least a little bit of personality in order to keep me hooked. And Knit Underground, <laughs> it just doesn't. The story is awful, the new mechanics, fairly generic, I just, I hate it. Even for 50 cents, I managed to hate it. Our final game, Really Big Sky. Well, if particle effects are what makes a game worth playing, then we are looking at the fucking Mona Lisa. If the Mona Lisa was a video game, shut up, you know what I mean. Really Big Sky is a bullet hell twin stick that apparently just didn't know when to stop when it came to particle effects. I will say that it makes the game look pretty great. The UI is a minimalist dog dick, but everything else in the game does look pretty sweet. Unfortunately, the overabundance of particles means that your graphics card is probably going to get put through the ringer. My GTX 970 is starting to show its age, but I didn't think that a game this basic looking would make it struggle at any point. Once you get enough enemies on the screen, I was running at about 5 frames per second. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Little did I know, the power of particles. This game is extremely one note, even for a twin stick shooter, and I think it relies a bit too heavily on the power of cool looking graphics to sell the game. It's the equivalent of jingling a set of keys above a baby's head and asking if he wants to buy them. Of course the little mouth breather's gonna say yes, but there's no substance here. I couldn't stomach more than 30 minutes of this game, even at 50 cents, buyer beware. So. What do I think of this bundle? Four bucks for eight games, 50 cents each. I mean, the amount of games that are good, I can count on just two fingers, honestly. <laughs> Iron Cast and Stick It to the Man are the two games that are probably worth it out of this bundle. Everything else is extremely lacking in one way or another. Extreme Exorcism also maybe gets a pass. Spectrum Retreat is also middling. Chess Ultra and Really Big Sky fall into the lower tiers. And then you've got Knit Underground and Fly Hunter Origins as just like the bottom of the barrel. I hate them. Four decent games and four lower tier games for only four dollars. I mean, it might be worth it to some people. Honestly, for me, it's probably not just because I don't think that I would legitimately sit down to play any of these games. Aside from Ironcast. Ironcast has the replayability that I always dreamed of. But if I'm just buying one game for four dollars, then I might as well wait for a Steam sale or something like that. I mean... Having all the rest of this stuff thrown in there is not enough to sweeten the pot for me. It's a decent bundle. It's it's definitely not one of the worst ones I've seen, but it sure ain't one of the greatest either. So let me know what you guys decide to do with it in the comments. I would massively, massively appreciate that. I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. If you did enjoy the episode, check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. Yes, and I'd like to shout out... Each of my beautiful patrons, Jess and Lol, Austin Lubitkin, still the new guys on the block, but that's alright. We welcome them heartily. Robert Allen Waits, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Rad and Cisco, Damon Darkstar, ooh, that is the crew. Them's my boys. And then also the OG, of course, Nico the Legend. Been supporting on the Patreon since it was cool, you know? So I gotta so I gotta give some props to that guy. You guys should check out the Patreon yourselves if you'd like to get some rewards. If you'd like to help me get some rewards, then you can use my affiliate link to buy this bundle if you do decide to buy it. I would massively appreciate that. Finally, we're getting back on the uh, fanatical train, which is pretty cool. Humble's also got some, some Warhammer stuff, which I'm thinking about covering, but that's still kind of up in the air. And then Fanatical's also got uh, the Reaper Bundle 4 coming, which uh, looks pretty cool to me. I'll definitely want to cover that as well. So we've got some, some stuff to work on. I'll try and fit it in between my actual paid work and keep the content flowing for you guys since I do appreciate you watching along with me. Take care of yourselves out there. I shall see you in the next one. This has been Bundle Banter. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator. And until the next time, friends, bye-bye.